I'm getting ready right now. It's a uh, quarter to 10 and I'm heading over to the Lower East Side Cactus and Succulent show. So they've formed together and this is actually their first show. So I got a message from a gentleman by the name of Tom and he invited me and I just happened to be in town. I don't have all my camera gear, so we'll see how this goes. And I don't have Sonder with me, so I'm gonna be filming everything myself. So I'm gonna quickly get ready. I'm gonna take a cab and head over there and I'll show you what we see. This is your first year showcasing, right? Yeah, this is our first, uh, it's our inaugural, hopefully annual show and sale. So we have a bunch of the members of our community, around a dozen vendors selling everything from seed grown plants to planters to books and ephemera to wild and wacky stuff. So we're super excited. There's a lot of different things and you can see everybody's you know, unique take on the, the culture and the, the hobby. Tell me what it took to get together something like this, logistically. <laughs> yeah, you know, it took a little bit, but um, we all sort of try and do our part, and uh, I try to like make sure that everybody is like heard and everybody has the opportunity to do what they're best at or what they're interested in doing. So there was a lot of FaceTimes and meetings and emails, but um, I don't know, I think we're all pretty happy with how things are turning out. Plant societies were really popular back in the day, and there has been a lull. Yeah. In them. And yeah, can I mean, you comment a bit on that. Especially in New York, like the the New York Cactus and Succulent Society used to have a very big annual show and sale. I believe it was at the New York Botanic Gardens. But you know, as like the old guard shifts and there isn't as much interest from the younger generations, that kind of was stifled and fell back. But I think that people, especially in the last five to ten years, are starting to get more interested in the physical environment since it's like dwindling and being diminished. So there is an uprising in that and there's like people are, are becoming more active in it. And it's something we're trying to foster to bring together those people from different backgrounds and different generations. So we're happy and we're trying to make it happen. Amazing. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of this. I think you guys did a phenomenal job for your first year, is what it appears. Thank you. I'm sure people will be uh, crawling up the gates pretty yeah. soon. I've been collecting rare cactus and succulents probably for seven or eight years. I got into it from uh, visiting Wave Hill in the Bronx, a little known uh, botanical garden. to get to but I, yeah. I love it they get you know they have their specimen plants in pots and on display for anybody to go and I've always been a collector of different things and I had some I was growing some windowsill plants like herbs and uh, peppers and then when I saw these like rare plants I was like oh I gotta get I gotta grow this stuff so I started taking down all the names because they have them all labeled which is nice built on my collection. Um, I've been working here at the Cactus Store since 2019. Me and Joe run the New York operation. I also started the uh, Lower East Side Cactus and Succulent Society, which is why we're all here today. Um, and what's happening today? So it's our first show and sale, very exciting. It's in collaboration with the New York Cactus and Succulent Society. Cactus Store is hosting it. It's, it's, a first, it's our first show and sale, you know, trying to be like the big boys, you know. Inter, like Intercity just happened yesterday. So yeah, we're trying to like represent for the East Coast, New York City, you know. 
So this is pretty exciting. What did you expect for the first event? Uh, I just expect to have fun, like, you know, have everybody, the communities get together and show off our plants, talk about growing techniques because it is challenging in New York, you know. Well, take me through some of the things that we might see here today. Sure. So we've got quirky categories, not, not usual to Cactus and Succulent Society shows. So we kind of came up with our own fun categories. So we have independent spirit, which these are kind of like plants that are unusual or went through some hard times, you know, recovered or have some, some kind of unusual quality to them. We have best color, which is, I think, kind of self-explanatory. Plant on plant. A lot of these are up for interpretation, right? So like plant on plant could mean that it's popping like these two or that maybe it, you know, is popping off a new head from, I don't know what happened, cold damage or something there. <laughs> Cactus versus succulent, this is another kind of open-ended thing, but just people entering their favorite plants, seeing if a cactus or a succulent wins. Spine mm -hmm. is pretty self-explanatory. We have some great spine entries here. This and is my little entry. All, are these all local growers? So, most of these, I would bet, are not grown from seed. Or they are grown from seed, but not by the people who own them. Some of them, maybe. It's best staging. So, staging is really important for Cactus and Succulent Society shows. You want to try and get them to look natural, as Zach did here. And then, best pot to plant ratio, which is kind of a, another funny category. Alex has, has uh, put his astrophytum in this incredibly small pot. <laughs> I think that's probably gonna be the winner. <laughs> so yeah, so this is kind of like our patio area. We've moved a lot of stuff around to accommodate the show, but. Um, and then is that, this is the shop in the yeah, back? Yeah, the shop is inside. Should we just get a little sure, quick sure. shot of that? So, so yeah, this is the cactus here, store. Like yes. seven days a week or five days a week? Six or? days a week. We're Six open Tuesday through Sunday, 11 to 7. Okay. Um, yeah, you should follow us on Instagram. We have a lot of great events that happen, usually on like Saturdays or Sundays. What's the Instagram handle? At hotcactus underscore LA. Um, but you're not in LA anymore. Well, we're not in LA. Yeah, Joe and I run this store, um, but our main business is in LA. We have a store in Echo Park, and we also have a studio where we design all the clothing. We do landscaping. So yeah, this is the store. We sell, we specialize in a lot of like specimen level plants, stuff you wouldn't normally see, at least anywhere in New York City. A lot of our plants are really old. We source them from all over the world. Yeah, there's some, this is probably my favorite plant here, Deschidia Major. Oh, that's gorgeous, um, huh? Ant plants are kind of my jam. This yeah. is kind of a lesser known ant plant. I love these two. These are amazing. This oh, is yeah, this is a Seropegia yeah. yeah, Armandia, I think, or Bossery. But that One is of the two. really dark. It looks amazing. Yeah, it's super nice. So this is Seropegia Bossery, I think, or or Armandi, I'm not positive. And then this is Serapegia Simone. Yeah. Which is green. I have the Simone. Yeah. Got infected with uh, so bugs cool. recently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this one might have me. This is Opiculicaria decarii, which is from Madagascar. Collectors like them for the bumpy bark or trunks. Um, the more bumpy, the better and more yeah. valuable it is. It's probably my favorite columnar cactus species, Lophoceria shadii, monstros, and it's the fat version. There's the skinny version, is Mickey anus, but I think the fatter version is, is nicer. They call it the totem pole cactus. This is a nicer one. More bumpy. Um, this is like our centerpiece this year. Uh, an Adinium obesum crimson star, I think. But this is kind of like a life's work generational growers, like a grandfather started growing it and then his son took over the nursery. So it's probably like 50, 60 years old. And yeah, it's really beautiful. These have kind of been the store's mascot for a few years, these Yucca Thompsoniana. Um, these are rescues from, I think, a property in Texas. And he got a bunch of them. Um, and they're very old. Uh, I don't, you know, we think they're like 80 to 100 years old. Supposedly they don't make a branch or an, an arm until they're about 100 years old. 
Um, this is also great Uncarina, Grandidieri. They like flower profusely. These nice yellow flowers. They constantly flower for us, which is nice. We had a couple, but we sold one. We have another one that's like bonsai over here. I mean, oh, well, wish you a Mirabilis. Yeah. Loved by pretty much everybody. And yeah, this is like our wet area. We sell some orchids. I have like a lot of my ant plant collection here. I have some cool ones that most people have never seen. This is an undescribed species of Hydnophytum. Um, I'm not sure exactly where it's from. Maybe Papua New Guinea. Um, this is Antheriza bracteosa. Pretty uncommon. Um, what got you into ant plants specifically? Uh, there's a website that everybody should go to called burman.com. He's categorized every cardiciform that I think, I don't know, may, that exists, or at least up to a certain point. I don't know how often he updates it, but burman, B-I-H-R-M-A-N-N.com. Um, but yeah, it's like one of my favorite websites. Um, really like priceless uh, uh, resource on the internet. I have my, I'm mostly into ant ferns. These are cool. These are more like traditional ant plants, but ant ferns I think are a little cooler. And I have my favorite ant fern in the window. Um, Should we go see it? Yeah, we can go see it. Maybe I can ask him it. Marco, yeah. can you get the ant fern for me? This is Marco. Hi, Marco. Hi. Say hi to the camera. Okay, this is my ant fern that I've been growing for a few years now. It's Lecanopteris. It was sold to me Lecanopteris curtisii, but I think the name is actually De Deparoides, something like that. Um, it's so cool though. It's yeah. like lava. It's totally bizarre. Yeah. Um, That's stunning. Yeah, it's, a, it's my biggest specimen. I had. I had a pretty comprehensive collection of all the ant ferns, but I went on vacation and they all got a fungus. But my other favorite one is Lecanopteris mirabilis. So is this, would they be considered like rhizomes? Or? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think so, yeah. And then you um, would- They grow on the tops of trees. So in order to propagate that, you would just take off a chunk of that? Yeah, people air layer it, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Ivan Black. I'm uh, past president and vice president of the New York Cactus and Succulent Society. Uh, I've been involved with cactus many, many years. Uh, since I was maybe 21 or so, my sister actually went to uh, Arizona uh, for a few months to teach the Apache Indians. And she brought back a, literally a cigar bo box full of small little cacti. Uh, and then I was hooked, and then a couple of years later, uh, I actually started living in Mexico for four years as I went to medical school. And uh, so I studied medicine, and I also studied botany while I was down there. Did you study allopathic medicine, or did you get into herbal medicine as well? Uh, well, that came much, much later. You know, I mean, I, I studied, you know, medical science medicine, regular, me me you know, medicine, and... Uh, and while I was there, the only American professor in the whole university was in the head of the botany department. An older gentleman from the West Coast. And he loved me because he, we used to go on these uh, botanical expeditions all over the country. And I was the only one that was enthusiastic about cacti. The Mexicans considered cacti as weeds. They didn't care. And uh, he knew I would climb any mountain 
or go anywhere to get any cactus specimen. So we would go up and down Baja, California, and all, all to all these different places. And then I would take vacations myself. I would go all the way to the East Coast, to the, to the, to, uh, the Merida, Merida and Cancun, the Costa Mel, I went down to Belize. Uh, I've been in 31 out of the 32 states in Mexico. And Mexico has the most di different cacti of any country in the world. You go to the last one, you know what I mean? Well, it, it's funny because the, the only state I haven't been in Mexico is the biggest one, Chihuahua which is on the Texas uh, border. So one day I'm gonna go to El Paso and just cross the border into Chihuahua and I will we'll have been in all 32 states in Mexico. There you go. Uh, so I've, I've been you know, involved with the Cactus and Secular Society, the New York Society for many, many years. And, um, and I'm a botanist in general. On the side, I also do landscaping because uh, I was very lucky as a kid. My father was in show business in New York City. He was a publicity man for nightclub shows and concerts. He had the Dizzy Gillespie, Miles Davis, Richard Parley, and Horn, et cetera. My mother was the pretty farm girl. And her family raised cows and chickens out in New Jersey. So I grew up a lot on the farm. Uh, pulling weeds for hours in the garden for my grandmother, shoveling manure in the barn in the winter, and literally in the back 40 up in the hills, baling hay in the summer. So uh, I guess that's where my love of botany grew up, you know. What do you think about um, the revival of this uh, event? I love this. This is fantastic. Um, I love the fact that there's all these uh, cactophiles and, and, and succulentophiles, if you want to call them that. Uh, and I lo I, I've seen some beautiful cacti here, including one of the rarest uh, ever, Lophocereus shadii monstrosus. Oh, that tall one in the back. Yeah, 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 that is a mutation of regular Lophocereus shadii, which is kind of an organ pipe type cactus, common in, in Baja California. But there's a one square mile area, I've been there, right in the middle of Baja California, where this mutation grows. And, the muta and, and normally the cactus has a lot of spines, or, you know, up, to, up and down the ribs. This one is a nude cactus, no spines at all. And uh, instead of growing straight up, it has, it almost grows up like these little warty type, uh, lumps. like lumps. And uh, it originally comes from literally a little one square mile area in the middle of Baja. And uh, it's wonderful to see a great specimen of it right in back here, it's fantastic. Uh, and I see some beautiful specimens and I, I'm, I'd like to increase the interest in cacti and succulents in New York City. You know, they're easy plants to grow. You can go away on vacation. You don't have to worry about watering them. You can leave them for three or four weeks. Let them sit there and they'll be fine. So, uh, and, and there's so many different kinds of cacti and succulents. There's pretty ones, there's strange looking ones. So the, the, the world of cacti and succulents is wonderful. And it's interesting and there's so many different colors and types and shapes and sizes uh, and there's something for everybody. Stay tuned on Plant One On Me for more botanical tours, talks, and how-tos. And if you're looking to further your knowledge on the plant kingdom, then have a look at our various online courses from Troubleshoot Your House Plants to the House Plant Masterclass. Additionally, we have a second channel we started last year called Flock Finger Lakes, where we cover more on outdoor gardening, habitat restoration, agroforestry, and even more. So check that out if that interests you. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode.